Chloe tested my gut health after I've been trying to improve it for five months now. And I bet you can't guess correctly as to how long it takes for an individual to improve their gut health. Hmm. So it's longer than you think. I discovered that my gut microbiome was home to a dangerously amount of bad bacteria. And the bad bacteria was double the amount of the good bacteria. This imbalance finally revealed on my Zoe gut health test. Explain why I experienced aggressive IBS for so long, frequent digestive issues, and forever always having weight loss problems and difficulty managing my weight. Despite a seemingly healthy diet and a crazy amount of exercise that put me in such a calorie deficit, I thought it would be inevitable I'd lose my man boobs and my love handles. I've already documented my first gut test with Zoe. So if you haven't already, I'd urge you to go and watch that first, pause this video, and come back. Without that, this video will still make some sense, but you won't have the context as to where I've started and how far I've actually come. And I'll leave a link for that in the description down below. I've had hundreds of blood tests and stool tests in my life, but Zoe's test was the most comprehensive by far. It's easily accessible. It's also the most classy and pleasurable of stool test experiences. We're gonna pause us for a minute there and get a little bit deeper. Because I imagine none of you have gone and watched that video that I suggested. But this is the most important thing in everything. Three and a half years ago, I woke up one morning not knowing that the pain I was feeling would hospitalise me. And hospitalised me it did, very badly. And there were a whole raft of psychological impacts this unfortunate experience had on me. And there were a multitude of other impacts that would ultimately affect my life to the point that I couldn't continue living like this anymore. And I had to make a change. And it all started with my diet. And to get a better grasp of your gut health, I'm going to discuss some common misconceptions about it and some of the challenges I faced prior to taking the test. The common misconception about gut health is that it's only really related to stomach pains and nothing else. I really wouldn't agree with that. But the biggest myth is that you need a restrictive diet in order to fix it. Besides the hospitalisation three and a half years ago, I guess the other challenges that I faced prior to the test were permanent dull stomach pains all over the surface of my stomach, the whole area. I was also struggling with very aggressive IBS as well. I still get the odd day here or there where I struggle with it. 99% of the time, I don't have any symptoms anymore, which is so much better. For context, my IBS was so bad, it got to the point where I was struggling to even get out of the house in the morning. But most mornings was made partially impossible due to my IBS symptoms. Really embarrassing to talk to your colleagues about it as well. I literally need the loot four or five times before I leave the house. It was honestly so bad. And when I was young, I was a full sports scholar and trained endlessly seven days a week. I tried so many different diets and regimes. It usually worked initially, but after a while, I'd always just plateau and end up putting all the weight back on because I've lost all my motivation yet again. Honestly, seven or eight times I've done this with other diets. But the thing that I've learned over the past six months, just to keep it summarized, pretty much just keeping a few simple rules that you know you can stick to. And then you build around that. But first you need the building blocks for a sustainable weight loss. You can't just go straight in and expect results straight away. You know, this is something that you continue doing for the rest of your life. And I'm motivated to do that because I've seen the changes already. But the main simple rule that I stick to is simple as it is, eat five a day. And the final misconception about your gut health, and I guess this is fairly common across quite a few things in life, is that you can just fix your gut health just like that. In my retest results today, I'm expecting some improvements. I'm not expecting anything drastic. It'd be good if my score actually did change, but if it hasn't, I'm not gonna get caught up on it. And this is being realistic because I don't just expect to fix my gut health just like that, like I said. Now, I had an interesting subreddit post about my last video where I discussed my fixes to IBS. And believe it or not, on the gut health subreddit, I just received endless abuse from people about their misfortunes when it comes to trusting people, which is just utterly pathetic in my opinion. All I wanted to do was to let people know about the changes that I've made that has resulted in me fixing my IBS symptoms, like I said, 99% of the time. There was clearly a group of poorly behaved adults who were amazed at the fact I haven't chosen surgery or medication to fix IBS. But if you want to go through with that, good luck. This isn't the place to come to and certainly don't give me stick over it. You know, I'm trying to do things sustainably, like I harp on about. That's just in my channel banner when you enter my channel page anyway. And I don't want to use processed supplements. I don't want to spend endless amounts of money each month to take these things that just may or may not work. I want to do it 
the way that people know how to do it and the way that it's suggested by scientists. So just as a quick overview, I'm gonna detail the process of taking my gut health test. I've taken tons before, and I've also taken 47 blood tests in the past for my IBS symptoms, which only really told me I was anemic. Unfortunately, nothing became obvious. My last gut test from Zoe was very insightful and reaffirmed what I'd thought about my gut health for so long, which was pretty atrocious. And the whole experience was much more relaxing and classy compared to when I went through the NHS or private healthcare. I had to use a Tupperware box, which I threw out instantly. But this retest wasn't the same as that. It was the same as the last one, where you got that pretty useful, I can't call it anything but a nappy to put on the toilet when you go, that's completely flushable environmentally friendly in that sense. I'm here to see if the results have changed. But like I said, I'm not going to get too hung up on whether or not my score has changed or not. What I'm interested in is the ratio of good to bad bacteria. As I've said already in this video, it takes quite a while for you to improve your gut health and just be completely happy with it. And given the position I started myself in, which is why I urge you to watch my last video so you get the context, whatever the scores are, I'm happy with it because of how I now feel every single day. But now, the most surprising thing about the Zoe gut health test is learning that my body had significantly different blood sugar and fat responses to other people when it came to eating certain foods and certain foods that were considered healthy. Despite eating those foods generally considered as healthy, like whole grains and certain fruits, it revealed these specific foods caused sharp rises in my blood sugar and also poor fat responses in my body. This personalised insight highlighted the importance of tailored nutrition, particularly when you're coming from a point of not really understanding food, and particularly when you're also coming from a point of not really understanding your own body and how it works, which was my status. Because what's healthy for one person won't necessarily be healthy for the other person. And this has led me to adjust my diet to better suit my unique metabolism and gut microbiome. Now for the big reveal. I'm going to have to do some thinking around this because unfortunately the overall score hasn't changed. But, and it is a big but, because I've still improved my gut health. Let's delve deeper in, shall we? It may appear I've done it in an unconventional way. I want to know what you think about that in the comment section down below. Given that I haven't improved my score, a series of ways to look at this. It's important moving forward for you to know that my IBS has been completely dealt with and I feel a billion times better every single day. And I know this because I feel so much happier and I'd never say I was depressed or anything like that before, but the shift in my mood is nothing but amazing. So I've clearly been doing something right. That something isn't just quite visible or tangible yet. Tangible in the sense that I can still kind of grasp my love handles and visible in the sense that my score hasn't changed, but enough dilly dallying. My gut health has improved because of the ratio of good to bad gut bacteria in my stomach. Let me explain. So back in January, I only had two good gut bacteria present, Robin and Lacey. Not only are those good bacteria still present, but Zoe found two more good bacteria, Rowan and Polly. So let's review that. These four good bacteria fall into two categories called gut microbiota. What I have most of is this thing, and I'm not gonna try and pronounce that. I'm just gonna call it Latch. This species is a family of bacteria commonly found in your gut. They play a pretty important role in maintaining the overall gut health due to their ability to ferment dietary fibres into these things called short-chain fatty acids such as butyrate, acetate and propionate. The key thing about this gut microbiota is that they produce a high amount of bacterial metabolites that prevent colon cancer and providing anti-inflammatory properties. It also helps maintain the integrity of the gut line and supports the immune function. They also play a role in digestion by contributing to the breakdown of complex carbs and fibres that our enzymes can't break down. And their fermentation process aids in the production of beneficial metabolites. They're also really diverse and can adapt to different environments in the gut. Their diversity allows them to play multiple digestive and gut health roles. And an abundance of latch is generally associated with a healthy gut microbiome. And imbalances have been linked to obesity, IBD, metabolic disorders. I'm going to pause there for a minute because this gives me my answers to my aggressive IBS and also my difficulties in weight loss. Not only have I introduced one more bacteria from the latch species, but the volume of my good bacteria has more than doubled. To summarize, I've gained one more good bacteria and have also had a huge volume increase. 
Whereas on the flip side, I've gained two more bad bacteria that have had a massive volume decrease. It's a bit upsetting to see that the overall score hasn't changed here, but that's not the key takeaway. You also need to consider the fact that I'm doing this sustainably. There's no fad diets that result in diet crashes and a lack of motivation. I could have gone vegan for a month, could just improve my overall score temporarily, but then I wouldn't have been able to have done this for the length of time that I've been doing it for. I have cravings for me. I am a meat eater. I have cravings for meals out, cheat meals, sweets, chocolate. But I, like most people, would have crashed and burned and put all the weight back on, like I've done many times before. It would have been completely pointless. I'm also 25 and living in London, and I want to go out with my mates. I want to go out and drink some beers and have a good time. And I'm not going to sacrifice that just for a short term overall score increase because again that's not sustainable. The key takeaway is that the volume of good bacteria has increased so drastically and the volume of bad bacteria has also gone down the other way but at least it's a start. I just need to keep on doing what I'm doing but maybe I need to up it a little bit now. And I'd love to hear from you lot in the comment section down below as to what you think about gut health. I want to hear about the things that you've been doing to improve it but also the things that you're worried about going forwards. Make sure you subscribe for more health related content like this. Maybe taking the Zoe gut health test can tell you the things that you need to know about your body, how it works, and the things that you need to do to get to where you need to go to. And I'd like to hear from those who have done it, who might do it, or have done something else that they think was beneficial. Since you've watched until the end of the video, I know you'll be interested in the next one, which you can see here.